Good morning, everybody. We've got a higher trade in the grain markets on Friday. It is 6.10 a.m. Central Time as I record here. May corn futures up 23 and a quarter at 7.71. December corn up 19 cents at 6.31. May soybeans up three and a quarter at 16.71. November beans up three quarters of a cent at 14.55 last. May Chicago wheat limit up, up 75 at 1209. May Kansas City wheat limit up 75 cents at 1225 and a quarter. May spring wheat up 60 cents at 1178 and a quarter. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button and help me to grow this channel. If you need some additional assistance from me, go to my new and improved website, www.standardgrain.com. Uh, click on the subscribe now button. You want to check out my premium subscription. I send a morning email out about six. 6 a.m. Central Time every single business day, all my grain marketing recommendations, a ton of weather info, my subscriber-only videos, which have become extremely popular. Uh, give that deal a shot. I did a video yesterday regarding the wheat situation. Uh, this situation has become extremely messy, especially in regard to the spreads and the cash market. There are some uh, extraordinary things going on that we've never seen before. I discussed that in detail, and I'm going to do the same thing in today's subscriber-only video uh, in regard to the corn market. So if you're interested in that sort of material, give the subscription deal a shot, guys. You can cancel it at any time. There's no other feed, no other obligation, nothing else to buy. It's a standalone product. Parabolic price action in the wheat market continues. Nearby HRW and SRW contracts were limit up all night long. Some giant gaps on the charts. Um, Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine has put wheat futures on track for their best weekly gain since at least 1959. So as discussed at length previously, Russia and Ukraine combined are projected to account for 29% of global wheat exports this year. The Black Sea winter wheat crop is in dormancy. Just so many questions here. Will Ukraine harvest their crop? Will anybody be interested in buying Russia's crop amid sanctions? Uh, a lot of corn and wheat, old crop bushels, essentially stuck in Ukraine amid port closures. So this is a phenomenal situation. It's an unprecedented situation. It's a massive supply disruption, uh, the way that it looks. So the market's uh, reacting to that. Now, U.S. cash corn and wheat markets are becoming almost completely separated from futures markets. The, charts on my, the chart on my screen here is the spread, uh, May corn versus July corn, the nearby contracts. Large speculators, funds, outside money, they are absolutely just pouring into outright long positions in these nearby contracts and also bull spreads. So these, these nearby contracts in particular have attracted just an enormous amount of speculative interest. As a result of that, Cash corn buyers across the country, cash wheat buyers across the country, they are taking extreme measures. Some are bidding only off of deferred contracts or taking other protections. I've heard dozens of reports from customers um, in regard to corn in particular. You know, they're posting old crop bids only versus the July contract and not versus that May 22 contract, which is totally abnormal. Uh, some wheat buyers are posting bids versus only the September or December contracts. Some of these calendar spreads are, tra are trading record inverses, especially uh, uh, in the wheat market. I don't think in the corn market just yet. But in the SRW and HRW wheat markets, you're seeing things in the spreads that are absolutely unprecedented. Your commercials, you know, your grain elevators, uh, people like that, they're dealing with massive margin calls on these short positions. So the cash market is just not doing what the futures market is doing. You look at my chart here, May corn on the board is 44 cents over July corn this morning. In the cash market around the country, there really is no such inversion. You've actually got carry in some of your cash corn markets, depending on your location. Maybe you've got a small inversion, but it's very unlikely that you have a 44 cent inversion in your cash market from May to July. So large speculators are driving these prices up. And remember, these are our deliverable contracts, uh, and there will be convergence uh, convergence eventually, but it doesn't have to happen right now. You've got a lot of time till the May delivery period. So this has turned into a really messy, messy situation for everybody involved. I mean, the, the elevators are short this this May board in all likelihood on a whole bunch of bushels. They don't want to be short anymore. Uh, the farmer would like to make some sales versus these May contracts in all likelihood, uh, but they can't. So this is an interesting situation. I'm going to talk about this a lot more in that subscriber video uh, later today. Uh, global buyers, global grain buyers are just not interested in these higher prices just yet. Uh, some of these wheat buyers in particular 
Turkey says that it will cut its purchases in an international wheat tender by 23% as a result of high prices. Egypt, who is the world's largest wheat importer, has just outright canceled two international tenders during the last week for the same reasons. The Egyptian government said that it's confident in its existing wheat reserves. Algeria's state grain agency said that it will allow French wheat to be imported due to Black Sea disruptions overturning a recent exclusion. So you're not seeing um, your big wheat importers in particular you're jumping at these higher prices, and maybe that's something that happens eventually, but it's not happening right now. now maybe on that same note, old crop export sales of U.S. Uh, corn, soybeans, and wheat declined last week. Old crop corn sales down 53% on the week. Bean sales down 31% on the week. Wheat sales, old crop down 34% on the week. So any perceived increase to old crop uh, exports for corn and wheat in particular really has yet to be realized despite this massive massive speculative buying on this very assumption that we're going to see this huge increase in export demand. We're not seeing it yet. Uh, new crop soybean sales are interesting. They were excellent. 51 million bushels sold uh, for new crop delivery of beans uh, last week. Of that total, China accounted for more than 90%. So you've now got the best new crop soybean export book on record seasonally, eclipsing the previous record, which I believe was 2011. Now, we did see some flash sales yesterday. China bought 5 million bushels of beans split evenly between old crop and new crop. Uh, 13 million bushels of old crop corn sold to unknown destinations. So that, that old crop corn sale is interesting. Is that a sign of things to come? Or are global buyers just trying to fill the gap between now and the new crop time slot when prices are much cheaper? Uh, that's a big question. Drought remains an issue for a lot of the United States. The government released weekly drought data yesterday. USDA estimates that 73% of U.S. winter wheat areas are experiencing a drought. That number was just 32% the same week last year. U.S. corn areas experiencing a drought just uh, 34% now versus 27 the same week last year. Soybeans 25 versus 22. So these western areas of the country, I mean, still very dry. Uh, the plains from Texas all the way up to Canada. You have seen uh, spring wheat drought or drought in spring wheat areas alleviated here in this, uh, say, eastern half of North Dakota into Minnesota. Uh, Northern Illinois is dry. Wisconsin's dry. A lot of Iowa's really dry. So the, the immediate concern would be the winter wheat crop here in the Southern Plains. But um, you could have concerns down the road here if the Western Corn Belt stays dry. Absolutely. It's really not much in the forecast for your HRW wheat areas. It looks like Iowa, uh, Missouri, Illinois, they're going to catch some rain here. But uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, up to Nebraska, eastern Colorado, those, those HRW wheat areas, really not much in the, in the forecast here for the next seven days. Chatter regarding biofuel circulates. Reuters reported yesterday that the Biden administration is studying whether or not to waive biofuel blending mandates, which would help uh, potentially to offset the huge surge in prices for key food ingredients like corn and soybean oil following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The Reuters piece cited two unnamed sources. Uh, one administration official, however, said this, there is no serious consideration of this by, by the White House right now. So this sort of action is, is probably unlikely, but you've got to keep an eye on government policy in regard to uh, grains in this sort of situation. Inflation is just absolutely raging, and it's going to get worse here in the coming months, uh, given these this surge in gasoline prices in particular, the food cost is, is secondary to that when it comes to inflation. But there's no telling what kind of measures any government, the U.S. or elsewhere, uh, could take in order to combat these issues. Could they do something with biofuels? Could they restrict exports? I mean, there's so many things that could happen uh, on the policy side. Uh, you've got to pay attention to it. Recent rains in Argentina have probably helped to improve crop prospects there. Uh, in particular, the late planted soybean and corn crops uh, are going to be helped by rains uh, that we've seen recently and also these forthcoming rains. Uh, the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange is reducing crop estimates. Soybean crop estimated at 42 million. USDA is at 45. Uh, they've got the corn crop at 51, USDA is at 54. USDA will release updated estimates in its monthly uh, crop report on Wednesday next week. So when it comes to South America, we know that the uh, soybean crop in Brazil has suffered substantial losses. The second corn crop in Brazil still has a really good shot. Uh, there's still a lot of people projecting record corn production in Brazil. Argentina is a mixed bag. The early planted stuff is going to have irreversible damage. The late planted stuff may have a better chance uh, here at, at doing well. The uh, cattle market was lower yesterday. Um, we were sharply lower 
in uh, some of these contracts. So we'll see what develops here today. But cash was mostly 140 yesterday. The boxes were just a little bit lower. And the outside markets actually fairly quiet this morning, I guess, relatively speaking. Uh, U.S. dollars higher. The S&P's down 40. The Dow's down 300. Bonds are up a full handle. Um, gold's up 15 bucks. Crude oil's up $2.70 at 110.40. It's kind of stabilized here over the last 24 hours or so. That April WTI crude was up over 116 at one point yesterday morning. Uh, have a great weekend, guys. I will talk to you Monday.